What is the best vehicle for towing a boat? When you're driving your car along the road with a boat behind it, that's not really basically a problem. It's when you go to put your boat into the water and pull it back out again, known as launching and retrieving, this is when you really need to have the correct vehicle. Now this video has been um, motivated, that's the word, motivated by a, a YouTube channel called Miami Boat Ramps. And it's produced by a guy that calls himself Bronco's Guru. And it's all about people trying to launch and retrieve their boats and the problems that they're having. And most of the problems are due to the fact they're using the wrong type of vehicle. Incidentally, I'll put a link uh, to the Miami Boat Ramp channel in the description below. See, it's quite fun to watch it. Okay, well, I'm going to have these uh, vehicles coming from the worst to the best. So the worst type of vehicle you could possibly have would be a vehicle that's basically just too small for the boat and trailer. And so small that probably isn't even legal to drive on the road. So talking about being illegal, I did get picked up by the law myself a week or so ago, driving my boat in a jet ski area. Saw the sirens and the, and the flashing lights behind me. There I am with a boat full of drugs and a dead body. And they said all they wanted to pull me up for was because I was driving the boat in the wrong area. But anyway, I got a caution. So that's not bad. And I lied about the drugs and the dead body. I was just trying to make a boring story less interesting. <laughs> but I think I managed. So the worst type of vehicle you could possibly have is a vehicle that is just basically too small for the weight of the boat and the, and the trailer. Well, slightly better than a vehicle that is totally useless is a vehicle we call a ute. I'm not sure every country calls a ute a ute, so allow me to explain. A ute is basically a standard sedan But it has the, that doesn't look like a standard sedan at all, but never mind. And what they do is they cut the back off and turn it into a tray. We call it a ute, which is short for utility vehicle. Here is a commercial ute, but are not generally used for private use. Here is a private ute that are not very common. As I said, they are not used much here in West Oz. It took me about two hours of walking the streets to find a, a ute I could take a photograph of. Anyway, why are they so bad for pulling boats up a boat ramp? We have to go back to my fantastic drawing of a ute. Now, as I said, the back of the ute is a tray to put items in. How much weight can you put in the tray? Well, that depends on how much weight the back axle can take. The back axle can only take so much weight. If you put too much weight in the tray, then you have to have less weight in the back. So what manufacturers do is they try and make the body of the ute at the rear as light as possible so they can get more weight into the back of it. And that's why they're really bad because they do not have much traction, much weight down on the wheels to hold them in traction. Now things get really bad when the back of the ute is down the ramp and the rear wheels are in the water. Let me show you. As you can see, when the uh, ute is at the boat ramp, that's rather a steep boat ramp, but when it's at the boat ramp, the back wheels are generally in the water. Which means there's less friction there now because you've got 
a very wet area, and very difficult for the wheels to get a grip. And the front wheels um, haven't got any grip at all because there's no, no um, drive going to the front wheels. The problem also arises as the boat's coming off, when the boat gets to about here, the boat is putting weight on the back end of the trailer. This is like a seesaw, it lifts that end of the trailer, which means it lifts the weight off the wheels even more. And it's quite common to get somebody unloading their boat at the boat ramp, they get the boat halfway off, boat, trailer and ute, or just slide into the water. So they're not exceptionally good uh, vehicles for putting boats into the water, but it gets even worse. Here are the four wheels of a ute. And the ute is going that way, so there's no drive, as I said, at the front wheels. The drive is at the back wheels through a back axle. Now the other problem we have is in between the two wheels at the back, is a gearbox called a differential or a diff for short D I double F. Now what the diff does it enables vehicles to go around the corner without shredding rubber off the uh, rear tires but the problem in bringing a boat out of the water is if one wheel manages to get a good grip instead of being able to pull the boat out of the water the other, the, tr the transmission just transfers the drive to the other wheel and the other wheel will just start spinning. And if you look at um, Miami boat ramps, you'll see that quite often. A vehicle just sitting there, a ute sitting there with one of his back wheels spinning and flying water out all over the place. So another problem with the ute, of course, is the differential. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a ute's very good for launching and retrieving a boat. At the end of this video I'll be giving you a couple of hints, things you can do to assist you if you are using a ute. But meanwhile let's look at the next vehicle that would be best for launching and retrieving a boat but only marginally and that would be a van. A van has obviously got more metal around it making it a bit heavier at the back but unfortunately manufacturers still make a van as light as possible on the rear so it can carry more goods. So let's have a look at the next one in line. We'll get back to the whiteboard. So the next in line, the next best vehicle to use is a four-wheel drive ute, which means it drives on all four wheels, not like a standard two-wheel ute does, and it drives on the rear wheels. As I said, that it gets slippery, the whole lot will slide into the water because there's no drive on the front wheels. But with a four-wheel drive, you also have drive on the front wheels as well as the back wheels, and the front wheels are basically on the dry part of the, the waters, basically around there. So the water's on the slope, but you get that. It's for water skiing. So the front wheels are able to pull the ute out of the water because they drive from the front where the ramp should be fairly dry. But remember you still have um, a lighter weight on the back of a ute. So a very, so a very serious four-wheel drive is complete four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drives that are serious four-wheel drives will put as much weight in the body as possible because that what gives you the traction on your wheels. So with a proper four-wheel drive you should pull the boat out without much of a problem. But we can improve on that. Well what is next in line? I'm certainly glad you asked. Right, here we have the four wheels of a four-wheel drive.
So not only do we have an axle going around to the front one and the back one. But this gives us a bit of a problem here because now we've got two differentials. Which means we can have the same problem of a wheel spinning because the other one's getting a good grip. As I said, the front wheels, if we're going that way, the front wheels are genuinely on the dry. Mm, you shouldn't have too much problem. But you may want to launch off a boat. Sorry. You may want to launch off a beach. In that case, you're going to need more than just a four-wheel drive. So the next stage up is called diff locks. So that means when you lock your diffs, you just get a straight axle straight through there. So if this wheel is gripping, it will still pull forward, even though this is on a fairly shaky ground. And the same with these wheels here, this wheel here, get a good grip, it will still revolve and drive the vehicle, as well as driving that one. It won't just spin the opposite wheel like it does um, with the diff on. So you need a, a four-wheel drive with diff locks. Well, there we have different types of cars. So far, the best car to pull your boat out of the water with is a four-wheel drive with diff locks. And is that the end? <laughs> Not likely. We're now going to go into engines. Now we have several different types of engines, the main ones being diesel and petrol. I understand in America they call petrol gas, which I believe is short for gasoline. But it's like calling a rocket a rock, because gasoline is a liquid and gas is, <laughs> surprisingly enough, a gas. So we have gas cars here as well as petrol and diesel and gas. We also have a combination of petrol and gas and diesel and gas. Um, now I don't know anything about electric cars or electric utes or whatever. The only thing I know that if you're trying to pull your boat off the boat ramp with an electric car and the batteries catch on fire, you can just back your car right down into the water and put out the flames. So I don't think electric cars are going to be a serious vehicle when it comes to retrieving boats. So we're just going to look at the two main engines, a diesel and petrol back to the whiteboard. We have the two main types of engines. One is petrol and the other one is diesel. What is the difference between them when it comes to pulling a boat out of the water? Well a petrol engine has high torque at higher revs. And if you don't know what torque is, torque is the twisting force that you get from the wheels. I can understand that when you're trying to pull a boat out of the water, the more twisting force you can get from the wheels, the better. With a diesel, you get high torque. at low revs. So petrol, high torque at higher revs, obviously a racing car. Okay, so racing cars have petrol or, or pretty high octane petrol as well, but if you want a car to go really fast, use petrol. When a vehicle that goes slow with lots of power, we use a diesel like a bulldozer would have a diesel engine in it. So the diesel is the better vehicle when you're trying to get your boat out of the water because you've got high torque at low revs and you see a lot of, the, a lot of it at the Miami boat ramps, the guys with the petrol engines will be revving the crap out of their engines trying to get some force to pull their engine, well, sorry, to pull their boat out of the water. So diesel is the best vehicle down at the boat ramp. So you've got a four wheel drive with diff locks and diesel and especially if you're going to pull your boat out of the water on a beach using a petrol engine you're going to get bogged very quickly diesel nice and slow to pull you out of the water 
Okay, there's a couple of vehicles or types of vehicles I haven't mentioned. Um, one would be a sedan. Sedans would be all right, but they're normally fairly low to the ground. And when you back your car down the boat ramp, quite often the back of the car is actually in the water, which is not really good um, in relation to rust. So sedans, you probably damage your car using one of those to put a boat in. I also haven't mentioned dual cabs. Dual cabs is where they've made halve the um, tray at the back and increase the cab. I used to have one, I just don't like them. I was glad I got rid of mine. There's just not enough room in the cab to put things you want and there's not enough room in the tray at the back to put things you want. Like with a full four-wheel drive, you've got a full cab you can put things into. I can put a um, piece of wood, say 1.8 to 2 metres inside the cab if I want to. Any more than that, it'll go on the roof rack. And of course, you get a full-length roof rack on a full-length four-wheel drive rather than um, a dual cab. So yeah, I haven't mentioned those because uh, they're not really suitable. Well, the dual cab is suitable, but it's just not as good as a full four-wheel drive. Now it's almost time for Salty Pete's Handy Hint. But before I do, if you found this video uninteresting, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for some more uninteresting videos. Or click on the bell icon and YouTube will let you know as soon as I upload more drivel onto YouTube. And don't forget to let me know in the comments section what you didn't like about the video. But now, Salty Pete's handy hint. I have spoken about utes and how they have a lack of traction on the back wheels. I don't really understand why I need to tell you this, but you see in the videos um, from the Miami boat ramp, channel that people are jumping on the back of the ute to try and get some weight on the back of the ute to get some friction. So if you have a ute and you're going to launch and retrieve a boat with it, get some sandbags. Throw some sandbags in the back of the ute to put some weight in the back so that you've got traction on your wheels. It's like basically common sense but people aren't doing it. I've also mentioned about the differential or the diff, how that creates a problem because one wheel will spin while the other one's got a good grip and you won't get anywhere, just sitting there spinning your wheel. So what you slowly do is put your handbrake on. As you slowly put your handbrake on, it'll even up the resistance between the two rear wheels and slowly you'll be able to pull your vehicle up the ramp. So that's Salty Pete's Handy hints for this video.